the past 24 hours. There's your three, five plus inches of rain, and there is way more on the way for us. Yesterday, that includes the record rainfall. As I mentioned, 101, here it is, 102.36. And that's been standing since 1947, just to let you know how rare this is. And on top of that, we didn't even have a tropical cyclone. Remember that mess that happened in April of this year? I mean, that is what really was one of the reasons that just pushed us over the edge. So flooding through really Thursday and then Friday morning is going to spread north into Florida as the whole system is going to move on over. So what's going on? We have a jet that's cutting across and that's bringing moisture here. And there is, by the way, some tropical moisture involved in this, some deep tropical moisture. So that gives us more that we can squeeze out of the atmosphere. So we're getting it, you know, mid to upper levels. And then at the surface, if you look at the surface obs right now in Fort Lauderdale, they're out of the east. Winds are out of the east at 20, gusting, I think it was 30 or 33 miles an hour. So we're getting, you know, that tropical moisture mid to upper levels. We're also getting that surface moisture coming off the Atlantic. So there is plenty of it. There's that east wind pulling in the moisture for us. So we're getting it all levels. And it's not just South Florida. There's your low. It's spreading into the southeast. It's going all the way into Mississippi still, Georgia, um, Alabama, and into the Carolinas as well. So today and tomorrow are going to be unsettled for a lot of us. Cool start into the 50s, the upper 50s for us. Mobile, Pensacola, Tallahassee, and as we go down the state here, Tampa, by the way, the west coast of Florida, as Jim was mentioning, that's where we are really dry and could really use it, but we just consistently get it here on the east coast with our flood watches, three to five through Friday, and by the way, some of the forecasts are calling for double that. So that you have to watch out. We could see double digit rainfall totals out of this, depending on if, you know, we get some training set up or heavy rain sitting over one area. But notice it's the west coast of Florida that is really dry and could really use it. Sarasota, Naples, in fact, the number one driest so far this year, while Fort Lauderdale Reynolds is the number one wettest spot for the year so far. Real quick, I know I have to get to you, but I just want to show the rain coming in. It's going to be an all-day event for us here Thursday, and it's going to continue into uh, Wednesday. Thursday won't be as bad. Reynolds. You always feast your fam in that. If only it was a little bit colder, Jim. We'll see. If only it was a little bit colder. But we got to talk about the warmth because there's, it's hard to find that cold air, right? Uh, here is where we do have the warmth. And it is spreading, you can see, just shooting right up here into the center of the country. It's all about wind direction. You get that southerly flow and you're going to get some of those warmer temperatures coming in. And we've got that. Look at the 70s for today. Oklahoma City, 63 in Chicago, 10, 20 degrees above average again for a lot of people and that Arctic air is up in Alaska by the way where they are getting you know, record setting snow don't worry it's only a matter of time till we get that cold shot to come in and there will actually be some cooler air at least for the northern tier in the near future but until we get to that 10 to 20 degrees above average and that is going to expand into the northeast as we head over the next several days so tomorrow we could be tying breaking records look at Marquette 2015 is the last time we were at 55 and we could get to 57 and we go down the list and we're going to be close to records that we had in the 1930s in Ohio and in Indiana. That just tells you how warm it is. We don't see this very often. And then tomorrow it really surges into the northeast for us here. There's your cooler air coming in. I told you that we do have some coming in. So Minneapolis, Chicago, don't get too used to those 60s. You got the 40s that are knocking at our door, and, but still the 70s on Friday as we go all the way up into the mid-Atlantic. Minneapolis, 42 is our average high. There's your cooler air dropping in. I guess I should air quote that, right? And then we bounce right back up into the warmth for our weekend, or at least above average. It's not as much above average, but it is. Here into D.C., 58 is our average high, and we are going to see our temperatures in the low 70s. Boston, the same for you. I mean, we just are seeing red on the map as far as the eye can go here. And it does look like as we head later in November, we'll see a little bit of a change in the forecast is showing the potential for some more cooler airs here around Thanksgiving. Speaking of Thanksgiving, when are you leaving for Thanksgiving? When are you traveling for Thanksgiving? Reynolds has your forecast. Oh, yes. The it is Wednesday, November 15th at America's Morning Headquarters. Everybody in South Florida, particularly from Miami up to Fort Lauderdale, it is going to be quite a day for us. Tuesday turned out to be a soaker for the southern tip of the peninsula. Davie, Margate, topped the four-inch mark, while Lauderdale-by-the-Sea closed in on a half 
foot of rain. And the next couple of days are going to boost that risk for flooding. And this part of Florida does not need the rain. We are above average. Fort Lauderdale is over three feet above average on rainfall. Three feet above average on rainfall. But it's not just rain and wind we have to worry about. We have severe weather and it's already popping off, Reynolds. Yes, that we have here into the keys you can see there it is within this huge system we do have a tornado warning for us there is big pine and mainland monroe county this is all considered monroe county here big pine key and it is radar indicated and we do have a little gate to gate action so there is certainly some rotation here um, this one is not showing a great but it's right here there it is about to go off of the key and into the ocean will be considered a water spout but that's where we do have the rotation right now and it is moving off to the northwest uh, fairly quickly for us. And if you look at the coalition coefficient, uh, there's nothing glaring to me on this. Um, no huge dropout, but it's also kind of small uh, as well. But we'll continue to just, you know, keep our eye on this one for you. But again, it's moving very quickly off to the northwest, so it should be out of here uh, fairly soon. But we'll see more of this kind of as we go through the day, maybe some water spouts, maybe some tornadoes. And remember, a water spout and tornado are the same thing. And so you just have to remember that a water spout is a tornado over the water. And so we'll be watching for those as we head through the day. All right, let's talk about the temperatures because we are hot, Reynolds. Let's get after it. Yeah, let's talk about their deep water week continues with episodes of high Arctic haulers starting tonight at 8, 7 central only on the Weather Channel. Reynolds, my favorite part oh, okay. was how do you find the ice? We smell it. That was great. OK, hey, let's welcome back in a pattern. Our next guest is making sustainability fashionable. It is a must for the industry because right now about 20% of the clothes we buy winds up in a landfill. Mm -hmm. Now models will be hitting the runway tonight in Denver sporting eco-conscious looks just in time for America Recycles Day. Denver Fashion Week show producer Nikki Strickler joins us now with more. Nikki, thanks so much for taking some time out to talk to us. Now I want to start with this. What makes the fashion at this event particularly sustainable? Yeah, so our sustainable night is one of so much waste when you're making something from scratch and all the scraps and how they just, you know, end up going in the garbage. Does sustainable fashion have to be expensive from what it sounds like? You can just kind of put two different things together yeah. and it's considered sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. So sustainable fashion does not have to be expensive. Love that. That is so creative. Okay, so, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the fashion industry and, and, and how bad it is for the planet and things mm -hmm. like that. So when you were thinking about a sustainable night for your Denver Fashion Week, what made you kind of make this part of it? You know, I would say in Colorado and um, Denver. It's how, yeah, it's how it's you wear confidence. it, not what you're wearing. Exactly. Uh -huh. So do you, could you see maybe expanding this to an entire week to focus on sustainability? Um, you know, it is a fan. So I love that now thrifting is like such a, a hot thing to do because I'm like a third of the price and I'm saving the planet. <laughs> Nikki Strickler, <laughs> thanks so much for talking to us. Denver Fashion Week show producer. Uh, I, I love this trend that we're going in yeah. now. Like, remember it used to be, uh, well, you've never been like this probably, but <laughs> you remember it used to be like, oh, well, I've already sh had a picture in this outfit, so I can't oh, yeah, wear it again. Definitely not me. It was me at one time, I will admit, but not anymore. I'm like, it's a great outfit. You're going to see it over and over again. Yeah, I'm just not a fashionista, so I don't really care, <laughs> you know, type of a thing. Um, but I'm glad that, you know, I'm changing times, stuff. I'm, I'm like it, Felicia. It. <laughs> For more stories like this, check out the weather because there is um, a, a moisture on both sides of the country that we're dealing with. That's right. We're getting hit uh, from rain events on each side of the U.S., especially here across the West Coast. That rain is just continuing to get pretty big events uh, coming into the mountains with some high snow. Uh, tis the season, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, that it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, well, it isn't easy for everyone to switch to an electric vehicle. You want to, but like, I have a car. I'm not switching yeah. anytime soon, right? Because right. I want to use that for as long as I can. Uh, one reason that people stress out about it is because access to chargers can really stress you out. It might be spotty depending on where you're driving. Yeah, it takes a lot of extra planning if you're doing road trips and things like that. So one company is solving that problem. News in climate change and sustainability. I'm Steph Abrams. And I'm Felicia Combs in for Jordan Steele. We want to get straight into today's hot topics. Now, this is probably the wildest story about an invasive species you've ever heard. 
Earlier this year, we told you about how the descendants of Pablo Escobar's pet hippos have gotten out of control. Out of control. Out of control. Pattern climate science producer Ali Van Fleet explains why the Colombian government plans, or what the Col Colombian government plans to do about these hippos. Mm -hmm. Hippos are really, they're cute, but if you Google, there's a video of a hippo chasing a boat down a river. Uh -huh. I've never been more terrified in my life, and I wasn't even on the boat. I was like, oh, this thing can go, they're really fast. Yeah, and they can chomp. Yeah. Like the strength of their jaws is, will like break you in half. I mean, I've played Hungry Hippo before. Right. There, there's a whole, what I'm thinking about is like, okay, so when were these first four introduced? Because man, they've really been like doing a lot of work. There's they have been doing a lot of work. 215 of them. Work. Like do hippos have only one baby at a time? I have no idea. I don't know anything about the <laughs> now birth I'm, cycle. Now I'm invested. There's an adult version of Hungry Hippos that you can play with a skateboard and a laundry basket. And someone pushes Tune you in. Tune in tomorrow. Out. We'll be doing that. Hot topic number two. <laughs> a reluctance to making the switch to EV is range anxiety. We hear about it all the time. The idea that you won't be able to find a charger when you need one. Well, now companies are working to make the charger find you. Ooh, I, love this. I love it. Ziggy. People, you know, get them. I think this you could have this like at your office or something if they don't want to stall a bunch of those. I don't know which is cheaper. And you love convenience, right? Like we yeah. all love convenience. You could probably do it on your app with like GPS. You could be like, my car's here and hit it and it would do it like while you're. Yes. Yeah, you know what I, what I was thinking would be really funny if like you're seeing that little thing and you think it's a robot and then it stops and a person gets out and like <laughs> hooks up your car. Hey, it's me. But no, I, I do not think the need will shrink because people love convenience. Yeah. And we've seen it over and over. Well, our warming temperatures are taking a bite out of our favorite fall crop. No. Apples. Researchers have developed new varieties that will make growing in warmer climates as easy as pie, though. Now, the problem right now... Jean here at the oh, Weather Channel. Jen, she, you can ask her about all the apples. She knows about all of it. I wonder, I need her to do a taste test on these apples. There are thousands of varieties, and she did that for my birthday one year. Is She wrote down, she tasted the apples and wrote down what the, all the like flavors were of the apples and gave me this big one with them all labeled. And so I could like see the list and be like, oh, this one has notes of whatever. I mean, it was like wine tasting that on an apple. That is the most thoughtful gift I've ever heard of. <laughs> but that's Jen Carpagno. For so you. Jen for you. Yeah. What I need to know is can they breed like the gala or the gala and like the honey crisp because oh there's thousands of varieties I'm sure they can. I'm going to go on a tasting test. Well it's a question that we all ask ourselves. Can I recycle this? Pretty much every, every day. day. Every day. <laughs> We're getting answers to all your welcome back to pattern. Now when Hurricane Michael slammed into Mexico Beach Florida five years ago much of that town was flattened but one house seemed to shrug off the category five wins yeah. and for that Bonnie Paulson is very grateful. Yeah Jordan and Steele takes a look at how this home was able to survive and what it can teach us about building resilient homes. I see what she did there. I see what she did uh -huh. there too. But what's interesting is we know all these ways that homes are, you oh. know, sustaining whether it's wildfires, hurricanes, no matter what it is, yet we're not building like that, it seems like. You know, sometimes I think when you see the upfront maybe cost, because I'm sure it does yeah, it cost is a lot more to, yeah. to hire an engineering firm to engineer a, a sturdier that's house true, that's or true. to bring in these extra materials, but the long run is, is yeah. I think what you have to think about a little bit more. I agree with you on that. Yeah. All right, let's go to Florida and find out what we're dealing with here because it has been wet. It really has, and from two to the holiday weekend. Schools, some schools are out starting Friday, so. Sheesh, they get the whole week off They get the week? whole week. Back in my day. Right. <laughs> we got, I feel like, Wednesday, Thursday, exactly. Friday. Maybe just Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday. More importantly, <laughs> how are we at Thanksgiving already? <laughs> it got here quick. I'm ready for it. It's my favorite <laughs> meal of the year. Jen, thank you. Here's what's coming up tomorrow on Pattern. This church is doing more.